In my last video, uh, we talked about the definitions of linear and angular speed. In this video, we're going to work some word problems concerning linear and angular speed. So let's take a look at the first word problem. It says a belt runs a pulley of radius 6 centimeters at revolu 80 revolutions per minute. So what information did the word problem give us? Well, it gave us that our radius is 6 centimeters. And then I see the word per minute in here. Per meaning I have a rate. And since it gave me 80 revolutions, I know this must be an angular rate because we don't measure distance in revolutions. So angular, angular speed is 80 revolutions every minute. Um, they do want us to find our angular speed in radians per second. Well, that's convenient because we already have it set up in revolutions per minute, so all we really need to do is do some dimensional analysis on it. So if I change one revol uh, revolutions, I know one revolution is 2 pi radians. And then if I change minutes, one minute is equal to how many seconds? 60 seconds. So now when I cross off my zeros and I multiply and reduce, I am going to get 8 pi over 3, our rev revolutions reduce, our minutes reduce, and we're left with radians per second, which is exactly what they asked us for. So now they're asking us to find the linear speed in centimeters per second. Well, I know that I have a, a radius of 6 centimeters, and I just calculated my angular speed in radians per second, which is really nice because our second matches up here, and our centimeters match up for our radius. So 8 pi over 3 radians per second. And I believe I have a formula for linear speed in terms of omega r. So I'm just going to plug in my angular speed and my radius. And when I reduce and multiply, I get 16 pi centimeters per second. No dimensional analysis needed to answer that question. Awesome. Let's move on to our next example. We do have three more examples in this video. It says a satellite traveling in a circular orbit 1,600 kilometers above the surface of the Earth takes two hours to make an orbit. The radius of the Earth is approximately 6,400 kilometers. Approximate the linear speed in kilometers per hour. Well, I drew a picture here. And the blue circle here is the Earth. You can see it has a radius of 6,400 kilometers. And then I drew this little circle rotating around the Earth. And it is 1,600 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. All right, so this, this satellite follows the path of a circle that is um, that, that has a radius, let's calculate the radius of the circle that the satellite is in. Well, I know that the Earth has a radius of 6,400 kilometers and the satellite is 1,600 kilometers more than that because it's off the surface of the Earth. So that satellite follows a circular path that has a radius of 8,000 kilometers. Well, what else did they give us besides information about the radius. They gave us time and they told us that time is two hours. And then they hid some information in the words. They told us that in two hours, it makes a one complete orbit. So an orbit, when I hear orbit, I think of angle because an orbit is a complete revolution. So one complete revolution. But in all of our formulas, we need radians. So I'm going to change that to radians right off the bat and say one complete revolution is 2 pi radians. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a formula for linear speed that has r, t, and theta in it. And luckily we have one. 
linear speed is theta times r over t or 2 pi radians times 8,000 kilometers all over 2 hours which when the twos reduce out we get 8,000 pi kilometers for our answer. Awesome, so that is its, oh, kilometers, I'm sorry, that was a, a linear speed, so that's kilometers and our um, kilometers per hour, because our time was in hours, there we go. All right, so now it says approximate the distance the satellite travels in four and a half hours. So we don't really need a distance here because we know our rate, our rate or the speed at which this object is traveling is 8,000 pi kilometers every hour. And if I have four and a half hours it's going, all I have to do is multiply my rate times four and a half hours. So 8,000 pi times 4.5, that gives me 36,000 pi kilometers that the satellite travels in four and a half hours. All right, let's move on to the next example. In this example, we're going to look at one of our planets. It says Mars rotates on its axis at the rate of about 0.255 radians per hour. All right, so I see that magic word again, per. I know I have one of my, my rates. Is it linear or is it angular? Well, because they're using radians, that tells me it's an angular rate. So I know omega is 0.255 two radians per hour. It says approximately how many hours are in a Martian day? Well, I know that a day consists of the planet um, completing, a com uh, completing one revolution, a complete rotation. All right, so I know if I wanna find hours, I know that if I if this planet rotates 0.2552 radians every hour, how many hours does it take to complete a full revolution? And a full revolution is represented by 2 pi radians. So when I solve for x, I get 2 pi over 0.2552 hours. You can plug that into your calculator and you'll find out that a day on Mars is longer than a day on Earth. And our last example here. It says two pulleys have radii of 15 centimeters and 8 centimeters. The larger pulley rotates 25 times in 36 seconds. Find the angular speed in radians per second, and they want us to find it of the smaller gear in the back, the smaller pulley. All right, so what did they give us? I drew a picture here, and the, the larger gear has a radius of 15 centimeters, the smaller of 8 centimeters. And the only other piece of information they said is that the larger pulley rotates 25 times in 36 seconds. So that tells me that for my larger pulley, I'm gonna say theta large, 25 rotations is 25 complete revolutions. And of course a revolution is an angle measure. They also give me 36 seconds, which is time. All right, so if it rotates 25 revolutions, what do I need to do to the 25 revolutions to turn this into a radian measure? Well, I'm gonna multiply that by two pi, 
And when I multiply it by 2 pi, I get 50 pi radians. So this larger gear rotates through 50 pi radians every 36 seconds. So how many radians does this larger gear rotate in one second? Well, in 36 seconds, it rotates 50 pi radians in 36 seconds. And I can reduce this to 25 pi over 18 radians every second. All right, so because we want per second, I'm going to change my time variable because I just figured out how many radians it travels through in one second. In one second, time equals one second, my larger pulley, theta L, equals 25 pi over 18. All right, in order to find the angular speed in radians per second of the smaller pulley, I need to know how many times or through how many radians it travels through, it rotates through. So what do I know about pulleys and gears? I know that their arc lengths are equal when they move together. So the arc length of the big pulley must equal the arc length of the small pulley. With that said, the arc length traveled by the big pulley, well that arc length is theta r for the big one. I know my theta for my large pulley in one second, that pulley rotates through 25 pi over 18 radians, and I know that the radius of the large pulley is 15, um, centimeters, I think it is, and that should equal the number of radians that my small pulley rotates through times the radius of my small pulley, which is 8 centimeters, and when I solve for my small pulley's angle that it rotates through in one second, I get 25 pi times 15 over 18 times 8. And if I reduce these by 3, I get 125 pi over 48 radians. So because the large gear we decided that we would work in terms of one second because they wanted radians every second, radians per second, I can say that since we used one second, the angle that the large pulley rotated through in one second, this, the angle the small pulley rotated that we solved for, also was the angle it rotated through in one second. So its angular speed or angular velocity is 125 pi four, over 48 radians every second. I hope these examples were helpful.